feel obligated to weigh in on this a little bit. This is the termination notice from our machinery who builds the machinery, a game engine. So quite a while ago, I made a video on this, on the machinery, just to see how it would go. And, you know, I'm not like a game engine professional, but I thought I'd try to make a little series where I basically reviewed lesser known game engines. And this was one of the first ones I did. And I actually didn't do any more of that series because I didn't think it went well, to be quite frank, like the series and me doing that. But maybe it would have, maybe I should have continued. It's not really the point. But apparently I was not too favorable of our machinery in my video. And I was just off the cuff, being honest, whatever. Yeah, I was actually hoping to be helpful as to like, this is what you could do to make it better sort of thing. But I can't help but feel a little bit responsible um, for putting something out there that was maybe perceived negatively. Not that anybody's complained. If anything, people have said, hey, you were right. And it feels bad to be right. Like I didn't want to shut it down. That's not my intention. And not that it's my fault. They, who knows? I don't know. I don't know the devs. I don't know their intention. I have no idea, honestly. I'm not the person you should be listening to. You should talk to the devs and their team if you want real answers. But I'm going to go over what they sent and what I know and just kind of review it from the public eye, I guess you would say. So this is the email I got from them because uh, apparently I did sign up at some point. Thank you so much for supporting the machinery. Unfortunately, we've reached a point where it is no longer possible for us to continue in the current direction. For section 14 of the end user license agreement, the development of the machinery will cease. All licenses are terminated terminated as of 14 days after the date of this notice. You are requested to delete your copies of the machinery. We really appreciate you be part, being part of the our machinery community. We hope we have been helpful in some way to meet uh, to your development needs, our machinery. Okay, what's section 14? I, I don't know. I have no idea what this is. I don't have a license. Uh, I probably have a copy of it on some drive. I, I don't know. I think I might have deleted it. I honestly have no idea, but it's not a drive that's currently in my computer because my OS, as some of you might know, crashed a couple weeks ago. So I'm actually on a pretty fresh install. I kept my data disks, but I don't think I installed. You know what? Actually, let me just check. I'll dig in right now. So that's, yeah, I don't have a copy of it is the short answer. Unless it's on my old drive that crashed, which whatever, I'm going to throw that out or just recycle it at some point. It doesn't work. It doesn't matter. So what do we do next? Where do we go from here? I guess I look at my video and what I said, or no, there's a second, there's a second email. There's a second email. Do you guys know about the second email? It gets put in spam. Uh, hold on a second. I'll, I'll show you. Okay. Here it is. The second email it's updated U E U L A. This was five days ago. Okay. I've isolated it down. Um, two days before the termination notice, this might actually be important. They updated their EULA. So I'm wondering, did they update something in there specifically to be able to terminate two days later? I've, I i do not know. Uh, open link. So we're going to go here and we're just going to have a little poke around. Where's section 14 update to terms. We reserve the right at any time and our sole discretion to modify or replace any part of this EULA and any applicable additional terms without prior notice. You may agree. You agree that we may inform you of any updated EULA terms. Oh my gosh, just legal stuff is not my forte. <sighs> I don't want to read this, honestly. All right, let's get, let's read the last sentence. Upon the termination of your license, you must immediately cease all use of service and content, destroy any copies of service content in your possession, custodial or control, including any source code or binaries related to the content. What? What's going on? Let me, I'm going to do some more digging and we're going to see if we can find out more. All right. So we head on over to their front page and this is what we have a, uh, a front page. First thing. We've updated our terms. Okay. But it looks like they still have the same front page. I don't see any notice of the cancellation here. It was just the email. So are they like publicly announcing it? All right. So if they're publicly announcing it, surely they would do so on their Twitter. That's kind of the standard place to announce public things these days, right? Well, let's have a look. We got an April release. We got an April pre-recorded talk, end of April, 
nothing from May, nothing from June, nothing from July. I also don't have anything from those months, but I'm not at the front of a public company of a game engine that people use. I do have a game engine, but nobody uses it. Like literally nobody. There's, you can't even get a light. Well, I guess you can technically get a license if you uh, support me at like the corporate level on GitHub but I haven't really made that license yet. I'll like literally make it when someone signs up. So anyway, I guess it's, I'm trying to make sure I'm not being a total hypocrite by just covering this. Cause I don't know, we're on the internet and crazy things happen. But the point is they haven't publicly announced this. This only privately went out, right? I know some other YouTubers have covered it. I've watched the uh, games from scratch video. I, I, I don't know. I didn't get a, a whole lot of new info out of it. It was kind of stuff already new. I kind of want to see if their Discord has more info. We're getting into a gray area. Okay, well, it doesn't matter because they don't have a Discord anymore. The invite is invalid, and they don't seem to be maintaining it as far as I know. Or, well, I, I don't know. Maybe they just went full private and don't allow anybody in there. I, I don't know what's going on. Like, I feel like... I feel like I'm a little confused. Do you guys feel a little confused? Like what's going on? Does it? Okay. I always ask this question in my video, so I'm not just trying to be, I don't know, whatever it sounds like, but I always ask the question of, does it even matter? Right? That's just like, you know, a life question when you're doing something silly for the day and you're getting upset or whatever, you got to ask yourself, does it even matter? Right? I'm not trying to be like, does your engine matter or not? Of course it matters. It was in my opinion, somewhat of an important development, although the problem was not necessarily them or their tech, I don't think. I think the more of the problem was it's a saturated market and uh, you can't just bust in and make something better than Unreal or Unity or Godot in a, in a short period of time. And if you do, it's going to be a lot of pain and a lot of perseverance to get that good, you know, or at that level I'm not saying you should even go in the same direction as them i'm just saying that when people go for a game engine the choice is kind of obvious for them and to pick something new that might have a lot of growing pains is not necessarily ideal when you're making a game the idea is to get it done quickly you don't want to be spending 20 years on a game i'm starting to learn this very quickly as i'm developing my own and trying to make an engine and it's taking longer than i would have thought you don't want to don't want to be in the weeds for so long you just kind of want to get it done get it released and move on you don't you know it always comes back to this i don't know i'm going to make up a theory all right the infinite life theory sometimes when you're in a project and working on something you don't realize day to day that you have a limited lifespan you feel like i'm going to be able to work on this until it's done and the thing is no you won't <laughs> you'll be able to work on it till you can get it as good as you can manage to get it you, you won't be able to get it done and it's like that for games too so you want to get in there and get it as good as you can get it get it as quickly as possible not necessarily take forever all right well that's a whole nother side rant but i'm just the point is it's very hard to get into the game engine industry and have an effect and i only named the top three engines there's a lot of other really good ones like there's what source from valve now source 2 which you can get i've played around with a little bit all right i'm going to look at the devs a little bit see if there's any answers from them see if i can find any more data on the machinery and we're going to call this a video okay i don't mean to like uh call anyone out or anything but this guy was just mentioned at the top of their tweets and i think he works on it a little bit uh co-founder at our machinery from stockholm okay cool uh let's just see if he's got any info about the engine well, he's got something in May. Our machinery didn't have something. Well, okay. There's the one from our machinery. So we got a little bit of additional data here. What is this? Okay. So, hey, we'll take you off our email list. Just give us a couple weeks. This has nothing to do with our machinery. This is just his tweets. But I'm curious what's going on here. There's somehow got to be some info out there, right? Just some complaint about email lists and it taking forever. Common practice of using DLLs by linking with a companion static live is unfortunate. You get all the drawbacks of both, sty both static and dynamic linking. We could dig into that, but I have to investigate actually. Yeah, I always thought that was weird too. If you have a DLL, there's usually an accompanied static live, but 
the static live is usually small because it's all put in the DLL instead, the shared one. So why do they still need a static live? I don't know. There's some reason, but it, all the data should be in the DLL. So the one that's being shared, the DLL, multiple programs use the DLL. Uh, hopefully you guys know this. If not, I talk about libraries a lot on my channel, so you can probably find videos talking about it more, but I know more about it now than I did back then. Anyway, uh, static live should be small, but yeah, it's true. But what, that doesn't have anything to do with our machinery other than he was, you know, tweaking the lives and kind of noticed that annoyance. DLL plus header is an underappreciated C library distribution mechanism. Yeah, that's how it typically is. Usually you don't have a static live, it gets rid of static linking issues. This Having the source is great. Building resources are often, unfortunately, non-trivial. I don't know, just kind of various complaints. I don't really fully agree. Like, static linking is not an issue. The issue is you just need to link it. Like, I, it's it's not an issue. That's all I want to say. Like, yeah, you got to link to debug or release and got to get things to line up properly, but... It's not like you link it and it just doesn't work. Well, it does if you link to the wrong debug release or it can, but yeah, you just have to have that sorted out. I wouldn't call it an issue. I would just call it more of a complication, <laughs> which isn't much better, right? All right, I usually don't tweet about project politics. This was June 24th, but can't avoid it on a day like this. Oh, this was the, the day of, well, you know, I'm not gonna talk about it on my channel. I don't get into this sort of stuff. What horribly sad, devastating news Stacked court stripping women of their right to bodily autonomy. What an absolute travesty. Let's remove everyone involved from their position of power. His words, not mine. I'm just reading. I don't get involved in stuff. But that was his last tweet. Nothing to do with our machinery. Just a little bit of outrage about stuff. Okay. So I don't want to speak too soon, but I'm seeing a little notice of maybe internal frustrations. Uh, that aren't public. So I don't really know, but that's just the impression I get. I wish all these devs luck. They're clearly very talented. Keep coding, as I always say on my channel. Um, I don't know. I'm going to dig around a little more before I make an outro because I feel like there's more to this. All right, just an article from, well, you can see the address here, probably gameindustry.biz by James Batch Eller. That's Bachelor spelled like a coder would spell it if he didn't know any better. Um, well, he, okay. So he mentions there's no ask to delete projects. You're only supposed to delete the binaries and source code, not your projects necessarily. So I guess that's good. <laughs> I didn't really understand that earlier. But there's not really much additional info here. Twitter page with Silent. Yeah, I saw that. We saw that. But yeah, they've only been in development for a year. They plan to take on Unity and Unreal. No longer possible for us to continue. We don't know why it's no longer possible for them to continue. That's the thing. We don't know if it's internal differences, lack of funding, uh, just going in a different direction, just, you know, just don't want to do it anymore. You know, there's a lot of like fine reasons, like, you know, my heart's not in it anymore. I'm going to do something else and that that's it. That's, that's fine. But we don't know. We just have no idea. That's kind of the problem. Um, that I think a lot of people are sort of annoyed by. Oh, I suppose it's only right if we cover what else we find, but I'm feeling a little sketchy at this point. I don't like to bring people into the public eye that don't want to be necessarily, but we should probably look at s some more info because we know who the other people are. Cause like, sure, Nicholas is a co-founder, but boy, that means there's other people involved. And I found uh, that the, one of the founders is Trisha Gray. She has a LinkedIn profile, but LinkedIn, I don't want it to track me and stuff. So I'm not signing in to LinkedIn to look at her LinkedIn. If you want to look at her LinkedIn, you can, but it's like you have to make an account. So she's going to get a little ping that you looked at her and all this stuff. And I don't want, to, I think overall LinkedIn is good for people trying to find jobs. That's all I'll say. I don't necessarily have a problem with it. I just don't like all the pings and stuff, but that's more of a personal preference myself. So if you don't mind that, I guess it's fine. All right. Well, 
There's an online education article, someone uh, interviewing Trisha Gray, because it's, it's a woman breaking barriers article. So obviously a lot of politicalness involved in all this. Like, I don't want to like get into that angle really, but here's the reality of this, uh, all this talk of women's rights and stuff and game engines is basically that it's not really involved. It's anyone can get as good as they want at this stuff just based on what they want to do. It has nothing to do with male or female or, well, it's a science thing. All right. You know, the way computers work is very sciencey. And when you're manipulating data and bits and running software, you're working with pure math, basically. So none of this political drama helps at all. It, if anything, it distracts the mind from what is actually important in making good technology. Now, I know that's like a hot take, uh, but that's objectively true. I'm not saying the other stuff isn't important. It just, it's more of a distraction than it is a help when it comes to actually making the tech. Um, the reality is you could have the best or worst be a male or a female, and it really doesn't matter. What matters is what's actually the work. I don't know how else to say that. I feel like that's going to get twisted out of context, no matter how I say it, but that's all I'm going to say. All right. Well, it looks like they were just buddies. They were, they were having beers at some thing and they're all gamers and stuff. Our client that I, okay, that I had was okay. So they were a client of of Trisha's and they decided, Hey, we're well, let's make a company, make a game company, change the world. So they did, they made a, they made our machinery and they tried to change the world. I think that's kind of a humble beginning. We still don't know why they stopped. I'm guessing it was just not profitable. And maybe there was some lack of drive behind the engine. Only one person or two people working on it. They probably needed to hire more people. It's, I, I'm just guessing that's what I'm, that's my feeling that I'm getting from this so far. Let's see if we can find anything about Tobias. Tobias is on Twitter. That makes it a lot easier. Buffer lover, co-founder of our machinery, rendering architect. Cool. So he's, this guy's an actual programmer. Probably pretty good. Uh, I, I don't know that directly, but our machinery talk. This is from way earlier. I haven't really said much since. Just, uh, a blog post, taxonomy of bugs. Yeah, this is, see, this is the, the gritty stuff. So that's sort of interesting. Let's, oh, it's no longer up. Well, that's unfortunate, but no mention of, uh, anything else. Just that those three decided to make a company and a year later, they decided not to. We'd still like to know why guys, like other than you can't continue, like, should we be worried about you guys? You know, you're real people. And we wonder now that the, you, you know, okay, here's the thing. When you make a company and say, we're going to change the world. And then you like push it and push it for a year. It's going to get some traction, whether you like it or not. And then if you, if it all comes crashing down, people are going to want to know the story of how it came crashing down because people love that kind of stuff. They eat it up. All right, well, that's my take on the R machinery shut down, going a little deeper. Hope you enjoyed. Hit the like button if you did. Consider subscribing and uh, supporting me if you want to keep seeing content about code here on Code Tech Notorials. Matt out. Peace.